Hello there. So there is this one topic that I have been wanting to talk about for a couple of months now and I have some written notes in my notebook and I have some notes on my computer and I have done a lot of research and experimenting on myself but what it com comes down to, what it boils down to is that people are addi addicted to various stuff in their lives. So the most popular terms, uh, term of addiction is, I guess, drugs. For, for example, if you are doing some kind of dangerous drugs, then there is a good chance that your friends are going to reach out to you and try to help you, you know, to get out of this uh, problem that everyone recognizes as a problem in today's society, right? So if you go one step below that, uh, there are cigarettes and smoking. This is socially perfectly acceptable. It was even advertised on TVs uh, when we were growing up. And basically, it's so acceptable that nobody is going to uh, not only reach out to you, because why would they, you know, it's just smoking. But it is a um, long-term uh, health uh, hazard for anyone who smokes, right? And everyone is pretty much aware of that. But, you know, uh, on a scale uh, in society is not something to be frowned uh, upon, right? Uh, so if you go one extra step below that and see where I'm aiming here is smartphones and uh, social media and um, all the, all the, how do I put it? Uh, I'm going to call it a refresh addiction and I'm go going to show you why I'm saying this, why I'm using this term. Uh, basically, uh, what I have been struggling with uh, is a refresh addiction. And by refresh addiction, I mean uh, various social media, taking my phone uh, out of my pocket for like 150 times a day, maybe more, uh, checking what's new on this uh, application, what's new on this application. Has someone sent me a message on this application? Has someone sent me a message on that application? Has a new email arrived? Do I need to answer here? Oh my God, I have uh, to, I'm too late. I haven't answered uh, a message for like, I don't know, 20 minutes. And what are people going to think? Uh, you know, it's um, it's a little bit difficult to to describe in a way that it sounds even reasonable, uh, if you know what I mean. Uh, and um, uh, you know, when I'm at work, uh, it's usually that I'm focused uh, on my work, and I don't I don't really have this kind of problem while I am in the office. But the moment when I go out of my office, I have too much like free time, and with this free time, it it kind of boils down to to the smartphone addiction, right? So what I have done previously, I have tried to uninstall certain applications. I have tried to, um, you know, use these smart timers in your uh, iPhone and Android phones that tell you that you have used this application for more than X, Y uh, amount of time that you have set up for yourself and you should not be using this application anymore uh, for the remainder of today. And then I would just override this uh, like infinite number of times and if it would not really function uh, with me. And then I have tried to disable notifications on my phone. Actually, I have disabled all the notifications on my phone like a half a year ago, but this didn't really help uh, at all. This only helped me to be maybe a little bit late to answer some messages, but usually I would just like frantically check uh, is there something new that I ha haven't seen because I have no notifications. Um, maybe it, maybe turning off notifications even made it uh, a little bit worse for me, I'm not sure. Uh, so the last step that I did is I tried to unplug from the social media for a month. And when I say a month, this is a deliberate choice for two reasons. One of the reasons is that a lot of books on the internet are claiming that it takes about 21 days to develop a habit. And by develop a habit, it means um, uh, adjust your brain to something new. And uh, whether this is um, making a new good habit or canceling uh, 
uh, an already running habit it doesn't matter it it takes about 21 days to to change your brain's synapses if you will and i believe it's pretty true it may vary uh, between diff different uh, people but generally as a rule of thumb i think it, it holds up uh, and the second reason why i have picked one month is because this gives me a tangible goal uh, at how long do i have to keep up and not try to uh, how do i put it you know when 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 drug addicts uh, like step away from the drugs for a couple of days and they then they go back because they cannot uh, do it anymore but if you have a goal uh, when when you say uh, to yourself i'm going to do this for a month and i'm not going to touch uh, Mastodon or Twitter or Blue Sky or Facebook or Telegram or, or Matrix or uh, Discord or God knows how many of these I, I, I have been using uh, and you know um, if you just set a goal uh, it's a lot easier because you know a timer is going it's ticking and you tell yourself you know only only three more weeks only two more weeks and right now i think i'm somewhere among 10 days in uh, since i have uh, you know posted my last uh, post on, on mastodon and uh, i have deleted um, you know uh, some messengers i have deleted whatsapp i have deleted uh, what did I delete? I have deleted Instagram, um, Facebook Messenger, I mean deleted accounts, right? I have deleted uh, Blue Sky, um, halted Twitter. Uh, there is a lot of things that I have uh, put away uh, and um, it's, it's kind of working okay for me uh, so far and this has brought me to some interesting findings. So first first things first uh, I have received a lot of free time and by a lot of free time I mean literally free time I have more time to do stuff that I have thought that I don't have time to do for example I have started learning programming in C I, I'm not a programmer mind you I don't know how to code in any uh, language basically I know a little bit of um, uh, blitz basic in Amiga uh, but you know it, it's very superficial so uh, as I said I'm not a coder uh, but I would like to learn and I have picked C and the reasons why I picked that language is beyond the scope of this video but uh, let me just say that I have found uh, a good book and I have been going through it for the past 10 days and it's going pretty well I take my a time uh, after work of course uh, and I study this book I type code and practice and I have been how to put it I have been at peace uh, for it actually took me like maybe five to seven days um, of um, what, what is the word for for um, uh, I cannot remember the word but you know when uh, you struggle to you know go back to the way things have been and it takes a while to get out of this uh, this feeling and and to unplug your brain from previous addictions uh, so it, it as i said it took me about a week uh, to start feeling like at peace uh, with with all this and I have only been using email and I actually announced on, on my uh, profile page that I'm going to use email and IRTS, uh, but even IRTS hasn't been, I mean the reason why I choose, chose IRTS is because I wanted to stay uh, connected to some sort of social media so that I am not feeling completely disconnected, but I think why it turned out to be a really good choice uh, is something that i haven't even predicted and that is uh, from my side i have used irts for a couple of days on libera chat for you know just like um, okay let me talk to some people online and after a couple of days it became boring you know straight up boring uh, I, I'm not sure how I think about IRTS anymore. Uh, the last time I have used it was pre 
uh, year 2000 and uh, it, it it functions fine when you go, need to go online and ask someone uh, a question because everyone who is uh, in the chat is basically available. I mean, not everyone. Uh, some of them use it in screens or, or uh, terminal emulators, but uh, mul multiplexers, sorry. But uh, it generally, when you ask a question, there will be someone who will answer immediately. Um, but outside of that, it's it's boring. It's boring as a social media. Uh, it's not a social media. It's just a real-time chat. And I have a lot of things positive to say about ears, but as I said, it's beyond the scope of this video. And I'm going to get, uh, uh, I'm going to get back on the ears topic in, in one of the follow-up videos. So without getting entangled too deeply, uh, and this video has been too long already. Um, one of the things that I did was kind of reconfigured my email uh, and the way I think about it. Basically, um, the email uh, as a thing um, was born like um, a snail snail mail, right? You you go home, you uh, open your mailbox, you take your bills usually, and maybe your letters from your friend who, who even sends those anymore. But generally you, you take them to your home and you deal with it uh, and you're done for today and tomorrow you might uh, see some more mail in your mailbox, right? And this is how email used to work uh, previously. You would have little mailbox that could hold up to maybe one month uh, of emails. We would have to download it to your uh, desktop application. You would deal with all the email and that's it, right? You would uh, you would be done for today. And as time went by, we got uh, EMAP protocol for synchronization and multiple gigabytes of storage. And people started treating email as instant messaging. Uh, and I don't think this was a um, good move uh, for email as a protocol. I think instant messengers should be used as instant messengers and email should still be used as email. And this is how I'm going to treat it from now on. If you send me an email, I will answer all of it, but I kind of um, made it work that for, for me that I'm going to answer it in the evening and I'm going to answer it on my computer. I'm going to download it like old school uh, on my computer. I don't really need all the sync that I thought that um, I'm going to need, right? I have been struggling for a couple of years to make uh, synchronization of email and calendar like a perfection between all my devices like computers, tablets, uh, phones, whatever. And I never made it work as perfect as I wanted. Uh, and now I kind of gave up on it. I got a notebook one of these and I have a, you know, I have a calendar uh, in, inside it. I don't know if you can see it, it doesn't matter. Uh, this is my new calendar from now on. I just write it down, right? And I don't need to sync anything. And regarding the way that I'm using email, I actually asked uh, Richard Stallman, uh, how does he use uh, his email? And he told me that he doesn't use POP protocol, he doesn't use EMAP protocol, uh, he uses SSH. Basically, he SSH uh, um, in uh, gnu.org uh, server once per day, or maybe once in two days, uh, and he downloads the mailbox file, uh, he puts it into our mail of his Emacs, he deals with uh, email there, uh, sometimes he uses the O button to move some important mail to another file and basically um, he then takes it back to the GNU server and he's done with it for today. And I was kind of um, taken by surprise with this answer because I really thought that he would be using POP protocol. I mean, why wouldn't you use POP? It's, uh, it's made for... Um, you know, downloading email locally and he's old school enough. So I just thought that he would be, um, you know, using a standard email protocol, but nope, he's, um, I guess, too private uh, for that. And I mean, by too private, I mean, he's very careful about uh, uh, 
showing his identity to various uh, servers online, right? So I guess the um, uh, obfuscation of uh, emailing through the SSH protocol makes sort of sense. I'm not sure if I would personally personally go that far to download my email through SSH protocol. Right now I'm just using EMAP, uh, not really for synchronous, I mean, it does work as normal EMAP, right? But uh, when I'm done with my emails, I just click the archive button and Thunderbird uh, moves everything to my local folders. And this is pretty much how I feel comfortable with uh, using email right now. Uh, but you know, this video has been going on for, oh my God, like more than 15 minutes. And if you haven't killed me so far, I don't think you ever will. And I'm going to sincerely thank you for watching this video for so long. And I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye.